Uh, you're listening to Encounters live from One Mill Street, Street, Lemington Spa. And my name is Thomas Hills. I'm a professor of psychology at the University of Warwick. And today I'm joined by John Pickering, who's been around a long time, according to That's our sure. professor, <laughs> who's also a professor, a longtime professor, philosopher, and thinker about the mind. And John and I often go on walks uh, in the countryside around the Midlands and Warwickshire. And um, today we're going to be discussing this question partly thinking about sort of mystical forms of knowledge. And so the question we're starting with is, John, tell me about panpsychism. Okay. Well, it, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a real pleasure to uh, be talking to Tom again. Uh, I've never been bored talking to him. Um, panpsychism is uh, an idea which... Uh, any academic will tell you if you if you say to somebody i'm interested in panpsychism there's this sort of lead shutter that comes down and then they reach behind for the phone you know to get the authorities to take you away uh it is the idea that consciousness is ubiquitous in the universe consciousness is as part uh, as much a part of reality as space and time and it's, it's as old as human beings, really, because if you go back to the pre-Socratics, Heraclitus, for example, he said, matter is full of gods. Now, we don't talk like that any longer, but I would say that with the rise of the, the last 400 years, with the rise of, of what we now think of as a scientific revolution, the idea that the world was simply material it's just matter banging about uh, like a big machine. And our sense of having an inner life, consciousness, having free will, um, is an illusion. You're, you're, you've got no more in the, uh, free will than a digital watch. I'll, I'll stop it there because I think this is rather unfair on Tom because one of the things that... Uh, prompted me to uh, in, invite Tom to take part in this is that I've, I've read a lot of, he, he does an enormous amount of research in different areas. And I, I feel that some of what he does overlaps with what I'm interested in. And I don't know whether he agrees with that. Um, so I'll, I'll turn things over to you and say that re reading your uh, paper on neurocognitive free will, hell of a title, um, at one point, you said something like, um, we don't need indeterminism to account for free will, neurocognitively. Now, I tripped over the first word and never got up again. It, do, do you mean that people were saying the brain was indeterminate, like a, I don't know, a roulette wheel or, or dice or something like that? What's what's coming out of that sentence? Right. So I'm I'm just going to go with the lead. I'll go with the lead. So so the 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 way a lot of philosophers think about free will, they talk about indeterminate indeterminism, meaning that the universe isn't decided. So this is the old Einstein kind of thing. God doesn't play dice. And people like Oppenheimer and Bohr and others said, well, God does play dice. He plays it all the time. And and if you look closely enough at reality, it's it's not there until you look at it. And when you do look at it, it's kind of random. It's almost like a magic trick, which is, I think, good evidence that we, we live in a, in a, probably in a, in a simulation or something like that. It only gets rendered when you look at it closely enough. So the, the, that's what I think is meant by the indeterminism. So the world is not there until you look at it? That's what the physicists say. Are you going out talking like that? I mean... <laughs> I'll be like, that was here before I was looking at it. But I think they've got good grounds for it, but you got to look really oh, close. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so I mean, it's, un it's unfair of me, but that, that's, that's really why I have come round to, to, to think about things in uh, a panpsychist way. But partly because, well, no, not, not partly, primarily because despite what Steve was saying earlier, I, I've had a, a, a pretty lucky ride in uh, universities. And I've been able to uh, completely change what I 
came in to do. I was I was hired to talk about artificial intelligence. And I was I still am very interested in artificial intelligence. But I gradually began to realize that computers it's not like anything to be a computer and it never will be. Computers won't become conscious for the same reason that they won't become pregnant. They're not that sort of thing. And I thought, in that case, what is consciousness? And I began to look around um, and ended up studying Buddhism. Um, and there's another uh, tradition to, to riff off what you said a minute ago about uh, other traditions, other ways of knowing knowledge. I mean, I'll finish by saying that when I used to lecture full-time to students in the first year, I said, you probably came in to do psychology because you're interested in the mind. The one mind you won't find in the degree is your own. You'll always be studying something else, like the brain. Um, you, you, you're, you're an expert in neurocognitive... Stuff. In, in stuff, you know, looking at the... <laughs> I mean, it's just stuff, isn't it? Right, right. Well, I, I think th this... If we think about panpsychism, so there is one of the reasons I agreed to do this with John is because sort of John's always going on this idea about panpsychism. In fact, he told me at some point early on when we met, he's like, I'm a panpsychist, and I had to go and look it up because I wasn't sure what it was. But I think the idea is sort of things like, I think the idea at the time, I thought the idea is things like, well, couches are maybe conscious or the floor is maybe conscious or table. See, this is where you're going to have to correct me now, see? So that's that's what I think we all need is for you to correct me. You you don't need correct me. It, it, it most people when they hear about panpsychism, oh, they they say something like that. Oh, you think your socks are conscious? Uh, I sure as hell hope not. But uh, what it means is that um, the 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 sense of interiority that we have is not some alien intruder into the world. It's there in the world before we arrived and before there were, and there were any we's. The, we're quite happy with phys physicists talking about space and time in, to, to, to dimensions that are completely outside human experience. So when you think about the Planck length or light years, or, th or things like that. That they're, they're, they're so completely outside our experience that, well, that's it. They're outside experience, and yet we're happy for physicists to talk about them. We take them seriously. Well, when you think about panpsychism, I don't think about what it's like to be you or me. I think about, and, and again, I, I'm attracted to a, a, a phrase in, in one of your papers. You talked about minimal consciousness or a minimal sense of self. You know, where does, this, where does the sense of self, not in, in the sense that, that we have uh, as ad adult men with names and families and so on, but just p possessing the capacity for subjectivity, I think we can we can uh, simplify it, reduce it, make it smaller and smaller and smaller, but it still retains qualitatively its identity. And you can go right down to the, the, t the tiny levels of reality that you were talking about, and it's still there. That's panpsychism. All right, so, so I think maybe it was William James who said sort of panpsychism is this idea of like mind dust. Like everything has got some mind in it. Is that the idea? I don't like dust, but yeah, he said that. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's a, a my, my, my heroes are uh, Alfred North Whitehead and Charles Sanders Peirce and um, some of the major Buddhist thinkers. And their, their sense of it is that the world is a, continual unfolding process and the part of that unfolding process is something like consciousness choice appetite um intention uh a wish to grasp the future in some way w when we talk about it you know in terms of uh, us as uh, uh thinking adults we, we we know what we're talking about the idea that you know electrons might want to do something uh sounds daft and 
panpsychists don't say that, but they they do say that something akin to minimal experience is present all the way down, <laughs> never right. stops. Right, and it, it, it it's it it. it it doesn't not make sense to me, right? At one level, because if I'm trying to make an inference about other people, I often make an inference about my own experience, and I I think I'm conscious, right? And if I'm trying to make an inference about a little child, two years old, well, they seem conscious. Well, what about one year old? Well, maybe. Well, what about just born, right? And what about okay, you know, fetus or sperm or like where does it stop? And I don't know where to draw the line. Where do you draw the line? I don't draw it. No, okay. certain. I see. So it just keeps going. Yeah. I've, I've, got, I've, <laughs> yeah. I've, 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 I've got to say yes, because th that's actually what I believe. But, you know, when I say it just keeps going, the, the, the problem is we're saddled with minds that are that of people like us who've had the luck to be born at the time we have been born and to have the education that we've had the luck to have and all that. And so uh, we're equipped with a whole set of very useful ideas about what it is to, to have a mind and to have the capacity for experience. But what Whitehead said, see, I'm, I'm going to get my, my big friend out to beat you up. What Whitehead said was, um, we should be aware that there is a lot of experience outside consciousness. And when we talk about consciousness, you know, we talk about human phenomenology, what it's like to be us, what, what, the way things appear to us, and quite right too. There's a, there's a huge amount of interest and work to be done about that. But the, the very capacity for sentience, that's what goes all the way down. And when it gets all the way down there, it's as unknowable to human experience as the plank length. It's outside our normal way of talking. But I, I think your, your work is, I'm trying to edge you into a corner, because I think your work, reading that long uh, neurocognitive free will paper, uh, and, and by long I'm not being rude, I mean it was, it was meaty, um, at the end, you said it something like, "No, this raises the question of the origins of consciousness." And you said something like, "Even even free will in non-organic, uh, non-organic non minds, uh, I, whatever it was." But I th I think panpsychism and the way you describe it leads to that, right? So if if we're thinking that everything sort of if all material stuff has the capacity for some type of sensation or experience or, or whatever right well then chat gpt in some organizational capacity has the capacity for some kind of minimal see i love this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 why not because you, you've you've got to be an organic being to to have that experience <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, and ch chat GP, uh, G the artificial intelligence is, is no danger. It'll never be. Uh, but if you say everything's got the stuff, how can chat GP, how can, it, how can you draw the line at organic all of a sudden? Yeah. No, no you're, you're right. You're right. I, to be organic is to have a history. And chat GP doesn't have a history. So if it gets one, it'll be conscious then? No. <laughs> <laughs> you're right i'm prejudiced i won't buy it it's a, it's a washing machine with attitude that's all all right excellent i'll leave it at that because i think we've run out of time um okay. but you've you've been listening to encounters live from one mill street in Leamington spa and please join me in thanking john pickering yeah and thank tom hills too <laughs>